up you guys welcome to today's video today we are talking all about how we survived our first year with our Australian Shepherd puppy all puppies are a lot of work but high energy herding breeds are on another level we're gonna talk about the good the bad the ugly and then at the end I'll do a little pup date on our guy Quinn. It's easier to film without him here. So he's out on a walk, but when he gets back, you'll get to see him. So we're talking about the good, the bad, the ugly. Let's just start with the bad and the ugly. I know that sounds really bad to say about your puppy, but if you've had a puppy, you know what I'm talking about. So before we get into it, I just wanna say that this has just been our experience. This may not be the experience that every person with an Australian Shepherd has, or every person with a puppy, or a high energy breed, or whatever. This is just our experience, and I wanna share our experience and what we went through that was not so good and the things that have helped us so much in the last year and obviously the things that have helped us in the last year may not work for you and your puppy it's different for everybody but this is what's worked for us so because australian shepherds are high energy and a herding breed they need to be mentally and physically stimulated every single day all day they obviously need to rest occasionally but it is so important to keep their mind going or their body going otherwise you're gonna have them getting into stuff and i'll come back to that when i talk about the things that really helped us with quinn we knew before we got quinn that an australian shepherd is just that high energy hurting needs all the stimulation there is but we just weren't fully prepared for what was to come our main and biggest issue with quinn was the nipping and the biting which is so common of any herding breed that's just natural that's their instinct and quinn definitely has like a natural herding instinct but tie the herding instinct with the puppy biting and all he wanted to do was bite 24 seven and not even like bite toys. He specifically wanted to bite our hands and our arms. Like that was all he wanted to do. I swear we tried everything between like redirecting with a toy. We have this baby gate back here because we were trying to remove ourselves from the area that we were in with him so that he learned that if he, was biting us, we would leave and he loses our attention. We tried that. We tried holding his little snoot shut when he would be biting us. It didn't work, nothing worked. Seriously, the first seven to eight months of his life, nothing worked. And I don't want to say that and have people be discouraged that that is gonna be their situation with an Australian Shepherd because it may be totally different, but that was just our experience with Quinn. He was relentless and we were consistent. It wasn't like we tried one thing and that didn't work one day, so we moved to the next and moved to the next we were doing this gate thing the whole time it just wasn't clicking for him it wasn't making a difference like i said i don't need to be discouraged out of getting an australian shepherd because we love him so dearly and he is so different now but i will say those first like six months of having him were a little bit of a nightmare <laughs> like getting to the point where i'm thinking like do we have to call a behaviorist get some kind of special trainer because i was just scared that this was something that was going to carry on in the future for him and we have a lot of dogs in our complex that are about the same age as Quinn and I feel like anytime we brought it up like oh he's still biting so much they're like oh really it's like yes I was just getting worried that we're to this point that like not that it's too late but that it just is gonna be a lot harder to get it out of him and then honestly probably around him being nine months old like overnight it was done. We weren't running back and forth between the couch and the gate. Like we could sit on our couch in mostly peace. He has this moment still where he still wants to bite at us when we're not giving him 100% of our attention or he gets really excited. But it is like a night and day difference between how he was in those first six months with us to how he is now. We're at the point now where if we do redirect him in some way, he is pretty quick to understand that he did something wrong. So whether that's trying to get him to play with a toy, he's pretty good about that. Sometimes the toy isn't as interesting as our hands, so it doesn't work quite as well. But the gate thing does work pretty well now. If you can get on the other side of the gate, he has realized that he's lost his time with you. And then when you come back, you ask him to sit and then he's really nice. So yeah, he does understand now that when we go on the other side of the gate, he's lost the attention. And when we come back, he has to be good. 
and that's how he is, which is great. We've also taught him what kisses mean. So if he's biting us, sometimes we can just say kisses and he'll redirect kissing and then he gets praise and attention for that. It's definitely at a point now where he does realize that what he's doing is bad behavior and he shouldn't be doing that. So like I said, night and day difference. We are so thankful that we are out of that wild, crazy biting phase. And if I'm being completely honest, that is like the one and only struggle that sticks out in my brain when it comes to like training him and having him as a puppy. Obviously we had our bouts with him gnawing on the furniture and scratching up the wall and peeing in the house, but those were all such minor things. Like, yeah, my TV stand has a few chomps out of it. Whatever, I don't care, it was from Target. Like, that kind of stuff doesn't mean too much to me. In the moment it's frustrating, but like, those things don't really stick out to me. Because he's such a smart breed, I feel like everything else outside of the biting, he really has caught on to so fast. Like the potty training, yeah, he had a few accidents and like that sucks. Obviously you have to clean pee and poop off the floor, but because he's so smart, he did really catch on to the potty training thing so fast. And one thing that I think was so helpful for us, if you live in an apartment and you have a balcony, we got a large kennel tray, we just ordered it off of Chewy and we just pick up sod from Home Depot or Lowe's and that's out on our balcony. So that was how we initially wanted to potty train him because he wasn't fully vaccinated and we didn't, there are a lot of dogs in this complex and we just really didn't want to risk him getting sick. So we were doing that for a while and then we just just kept it after he was all good with all the shots because it's so convenient and you know we would have to go down the hall and down the elevator and through the garage and outside every single time that he has to pee and this dog loves to drink water more than anything else so I swear he's asking to go out all the time but it was just convenient for when he was a puppy and he couldn't hold his bladder very well. You just open the door and show him where to go and then he goes. So I highly recommend that if you have a balcony and you have space for it. So now that we've talked about some of the more hard and negative things that we had to deal with raising our Australian Shepherd puppy, I wanna talk about some of the things that really helped us out in getting through this first year. So I'm sure you can imagine that since Quinn was a biter, he probably likes to chew. He loves to chew on every single toy possible. Doesn't matter if it's a chew toy, he's gonna chew on it. So unfortunately he only has a select few toys that are out because he just destroys them. There are definitely a handful of them that he will probably continue to receive for the rest of his life. The first, the brand Kong. I'm sure if you're watching this, you've probably heard of the brand. They've been around for a long time. He has some of the just like standard Kongs that you can fill with food. He just likes to play with those. I mean, he loves when they're filled with peanut butter or something like that too. But he does really just like to play fetch with those, chew on those, like those are some of his favorite toys. He does have some other Kong brand toys that are pretty durable. Like if we got them from a different brand, I feel like they wouldn't be as durable. So they're pretty durable, but he still has found a way to like put a few dents in them, unfortunately, but they've still held up really, really well. And they're a brand that we will probably continue to buy for a long time. The other two toys that he really likes are both Bones. I know everybody has their own opinion on bones and what you should and should not give your dogs. This is just what works for Quinn. The first one being a Benabone. I pulled out all the things that he has besides the Kongs so I could show you what they are. And when I pulled them out, I was like, hmm, these are all really gross looking. So they're just well loved. So this is the Benabone. They come in different like shapes, but it's a nylon bone and they're supposed to be really good for tough chewers. So with this, I think they recommend because it's not really edible, that once they start getting pieces off that are bigger than a grain of rice that you take it from them, we're always around when he's having one of these. So if we notice that he's starting to like pull and like try and get a chunk off, we'll just take it from him, cut it off, and then he'll have a fresh bone for the next time. The next bone I don't actually have I said I had examples for everything but the Kong, but I don't have an example of this one. They are the Himalayan Yak Cheese Chews. One of my coworkers recommended these to me and they have been great for Quinn. They have all different kinds, but we just get like the 100% Yak Cheese. This has been great, keeps him busy. It's enticing to him because it's food. And I feel good about giving him something like that because I know it's just cheese. We are just cautious about when he's chewing 
working on these, just like paying attention to how much of it he's getting all at once because dairy can upset your dog's stomachs. We take it from him at a certain point so he's not having a whole bone in one sitting because the intestinal distress is not worth it. <laughs> Moving on from the chewing. Those are his top chewing options. This next item I think has been my favorite out of all the things that we found. And I'm so grateful that we found these. Lick mats, or as we call them, licky mats. So basically it's just a silicone mat with a bunch of different patterns and textures on it. And we just slap some peanut butter all over this. We've done banana, we've done pumpkin. You can freeze them so that it lasts a little bit longer. The licking on like the different textures is very mentally stimulating for them. When dogs lick, it also releases like happy hormones. So sometimes when Quinn's getting a little feisty and we want him to settle down a little bit, we'll give him a licking mat. And it really does, I feel like, just help to like calm him down, make him feel a little happier. Those have been amazing. I'm so thankful that we found those. Also, I don't think I said this, but I will leave links for all these things in the description below because, because like I said, these have made such a difference for Quinn in his behavior and just how he is with us. So I want you guys to know where you can find these as well. And then last but not least on the mentally stimulating items list is a bob -a lot I forget. Oh, there's a kibble in here. <laughs> he didn't finish his kibble. I saw someone post about this on TikTok and I looked into it. It had a ton of great reviews. And basically this lid, this yellow lid comes off and then you just fill it with kibble. And then there's this little, it's very hairy, this little door that you can open or closed. You can change how open it is depending on the size of the kibble or treat that you put in there. And then they just push it around with their nose and get the kibble out. And honestly, if we put his whole meal in here, it probably takes him 20 to 30 minutes to finish it. This has been amazing for him. The only thing about this one is it is loud. Like when it's rolling around on the floor and smacking it into things. That's basically what it sounds like. Just be aware of that if you have hard floors like we do. There's one other thing I forgot to mention kind of along with the licky mat is we call them licky bowls, but I just got him two metal food bowls just like this big and we'll put just like a little bit of kibble, a little bit of banana and a little bit of peanut butter and then fill it up with water and put it in the freezer. Kind of same concept as the licking mat. He's licking and also like mentally working to get that food out of the bowl. He's very food driven, which helps. I know that's not the case for every single dog. It's another option that's been really great for us. And finally, this is not an enrichment toy or puzzle or anything like that, but a good training session will do him good for his mental stimulation. For every single meal, basically, unless we're in a rush, we will do training with him when we're feeding him. So in the mornings, it's usually a little more chill. So we have a little pouch and then one by one, we're doing old tricks, we're learning new tricks. Sometimes we take his food out on a walk and we you know, are doing training with him outdoors so that we're sure that he is very well behaved in public, which he actually is the most behaved in public compared to at home. But I could not be more thankful that he's so well behaved in public. Like I would much rather have that and have all of our neighbors think that he is a sweet, perfect angel than have it be the other way around. But yeah, we do a lot of training with him and it just keeps his mind going and going and going. That's another easy way, you know, you have to be engaged with him, but they also love that. They love you. These dogs are bell crow. Like they want to be with you every moment, all the time as close to you as possible. So yeah, a training session really does them well. Those are kind of the major things that have really made a difference for us in this first year with Quinn. All right, Quinny is back from his dog park adventure. He's just over a year old and he is just under 60 pounds and he is just the biggest lover boy and I told you that he loves this bone and he really, really does. He either wants to be laying, doing nothing, or chewing on this bone right now. I figured it'd be easier for you to see him if he was just chewing on his bone. He really just loves to play with his friends and go on walks, and he's not so sure about the car, but he's getting better. He used to get really car sick in the car, but he's doing a lot better with that. He's just still not sure 
if he wants to go wherever we're going. He likes to do what we call smother, where you sit on the couch and he likes to sit just right on you, right on your lap, smother you real good. Doesn't know that he's a full grown doggy. You wanna do some of your trickos? This is that little pouch that I was talking about that we put his kibble in and then we have a little collapsible water dish that we take to the dog park so that he's not drinking out of the nasty water bowl that's down at the park. I just remembered that the first video I think that I posted with Quinn, I showed you some of his tricks. He's learned a lot of tricks since then. Okay, can you sit? Go boy. Can you shake? Other paw? Go boy. Okay, can you whisper? Whisper. Good boy. That one's the best one. Can you touch? Good boy. Can you spin? No, he says, that's enough, mom, I'm done. Well, those are just a few of his tricks. He has plenty that he knows now, but just wanted to show you a few that are really cute. We love the whisper trick. It's our favorite to show off because it's just so cute. So anyways, that is how we've survived our first year with our Australian Shepherd puppy. If you have any questions that maybe I didn't get to, leave them down in the comments below. And I think that's all we got. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.